Hi, I'm Rich and this is Pretty Little Potato. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a really exciting video planned. I have released my microblading journey and my experience and I've had so many questions about it. So what I wanted to do is an FAQ video just on my experience and what people have asked me and the most common questions, just in case anyone else is, is considering getting it done. So let's get started. So the first question is actually from my dad. Did you tattoo your face? <laughs> Microblading is not a tattoo, first of all. There are similarities, but it's it's not a tattoo. It's a newer procedure that uses like semi-permanent ink. Tattoo scars your skin. Microblading doesn't. If, if it scars your skin, the technician's doing it wrong. So yes, to put everyone's mind at rest, I didn't tattoo my face, can't I? How does it work? On my Insta story, I have a microblading highlight which has a lot of information on there about my journey all the way through and there's a little section about microblading but essentially it is a semi-permanent cosmetic procedure and there's a tiny little brush that looks like a little rake and sounds like a butter knife when it's going over your eyebrows. It puts a pigment on your eyebrows, the technician will shape them to the way that you want them and fill it in and it lasts for ages. So. That's essentially how it works. How long does microblading take? So there's three appointments that you should go to. This actually ties into another question that I was asked. Would you recommend a consultation? Yes, definitely 100% go to your consultation because you get to ask questions to your technician and I'm gonna come on to it in a little bit just about what questions you should ask them. But in the consultation, you get to get a feel of what's going on. The procedure is explained to you and you can ask about the products and, and everything like that. So definitely go for a consultation. What happened in my consultation was a wax and a tint and then Louise talked me through what would happen and shaped out my brows a little bit and we basically came to an agreement of what we would do and I went, yes, I want to get this done. So we booked me in for the next two appointments. So there's the consultation that took about half an hour and then the first filling appointment where she measures everything out and it's perfect and you take your sweet time, you get it exactly the way that you want it because it is semi-permanent so it needs to be spot on and at your face. So that took about an hour and a half and the second appointment is just the same appointment again. It's just another micro living appointment but she, again she does, she's such a professional, she's brilliant. She measures it out to make sure you're happy and any changes that you want. Um, oh, something else that we discussed as well. I have what she called a beauty spot, this little thing here, whatever it is, and she didn't want to touch it so we spent a lot of time talking about how we were going to go round it and she was going to go nowhere near it and yet I wanted more of a square look so we kind of planned out what would happen in the first session so it wouldn't be necessarily as arched as I want or a square here but we would get that in the second session and that's exactly what happened so it's really good to go in with someone who you have first of all done your research on and again that's something else I'll come to in a minute but someone else who you've done your research on and someone who you trust implicitly because they're doing a semi-permanent procedure on your face. So very, very important to make sure you pick the right person. And I'll come on to how I did that in just a second. The question I was asked most frequently was, was it painful? That's a really interesting question. I don't have any tattoos. So for me, there's no kind of comparison. If people are like, oh yeah, it kind of feels like a tattoo. I don't know. So it felt like a tiny little butter knife, but like a, a stingy butter knife going across your face. Two things I would say, the first is that this high point here was the most sore for me here when she did it, I barely felt it. And at the end as well, it wasn't as painful. Painful is not even the right word, it was just very uncomfortable. And when I'm kind of uncomfortable like that, I frown my eyebrows so she was trying to pull it tight and you were trying not to move. And secondly, my adrenaline was going through it because it is something like a little tiny rake thing near your face and you can hear it. It's the oddest sound to hear. It's like someone kind of pulling at your skin. If you imagine a rake on a concrete and how that sound makes you uncomfortable. But what I was struggling with the most is not pulling away from her while she was doing it. And apparently there's a nerve up here that it, it makes you sneeze. So if you feel like you're gonna sneeze, you have to tell your technician and <laughs> because you don't wanna sneeze and then go absolutely wild with the, with the blade. I found that my adrenaline was going because I was trying to not, my instinct was to move away from the thing and to, to be like, don't do that to my face. But it, it's not a kind of in a scared way, it's just because it's, it's a really weird sound and feeling here. She actually, when the first time in the microblading appointment, so this was not the consultation, but the appointment after that, 
she asked me if I wanted to see what the little blade looked like and it just looked like a tiny tiny little a rounded like end and the blades were really really small and really tiny and it just looked like a tiny little like a rake is splayed like that but if you imagine kind of a straight rake it was a tiny little thing that just sounded like a butter knife but it was very very strange sensation but again painful I think is too strong a word and obviously it depends on your pain threshold as well some people are very sensitive here I didn't bleed at all whenever she did my eyebrows was it painful I would say more weird and uncomfortable. Louise was amazing. She put me at set E, she talked me through it, she showed me the blade, she was telling me exactly what she was doing at each point. She was just, she was so great throughout the entire appointment and we talked about I'm going to Paris soon and she distracted me with like really great places to have cocktails in Paris. So that was really nice and she just, she was able to work away and do everything absolutely perfectly and she completely completely put me at ease, she was great. Did you have to repeat the second set of the 10 day recovery? Yes, you do have to repeat the second, the set of 10 day aftercare healing. And it's, it's, it's common sense too, because you've paid so much money for your brows. You must absolutely follow the aftercare instructions that you were given. And it's really, really important. You can't get your brows wet for, I think it's seven to 10 days, but I erred on the side of caution, didn't get them wet for I haven't got them wet since I first did it, <laughs> if I'm honest, I've, I've bought a coat with a hood, I was so determined. You can't get like really sweaty, so like I would like to go for a run or do exercise, so I've had to kind of really cut down on exercise that makes me really sweaty. You can't use any products or anything on them. Louise very helpfully gives you a little information booklet and any technician that you're going to should give you the key aftercare steps of what to do and what not to do and should talk you through that. Also I got a little balm from LH Beauty, hang on, I'll go get it. So this is the balm that I was given. And this balm is amazing. It's an LH Beauty balm and it's got so many amazing natural ingredients in them. You pop it on two to three times a day and it works wonders. I've actually found that yesterday I put it on in the morning and I forgot to put some on during the day and at night time and I woke up to little flakes. So this went on heavily today, which is why my eyebrows have kind of that wet look to them. Right. Where were we? How much does it cost? For this, it's not necessarily looking for the best deal that you can get, it's the best technician and the best artist because it's your face. So <laughs> the cost of the each microblading session is £150 and two sessions are required for the first stage. So it's £300 to get it done. Your brow should last you between 12 and 18 months and it completely depends on how you take care of them. Sun exposure and your skin type as well, I'm quite pale and quite fair so my brow should hopefully last me towards the 18 months rather than 12 months but the top ups then every year 18 months are 150 pounds so what I'm starting to do is I'm putting 10 pounds away a month and then that will pay for it whenever I need to get them done and to be honest I would have spent 10 pounds a month on brow products. What if it goes wrong? I've seen horrendous results on other people and I'm really scared to try it. It is a risk, it's your face, it is a risk. However, to minimize that risk, what I would do is research, research, research. I watched LH Beauty for two years before I went and I got this done. She posted all her results on Instagram, on her Facebook, and I watched the procedures and I listened to people's reviews. And even long-term reviews, watching people who are going the year you know, after that they've got it done initially and the long-term process, because when I was researching, I was really worried about scarring as well, but during my research, and this is something I talked about with Louise, is they don't, they don't go deep into the skin. If, if someone is scarring, they're not doing it right. You don't go that deep into the skin to put down the pigment. So what I would say is, in order to minimize the risk of, some, of, of it going wrong, do your research. Find a technician that you are comfortable with. And this kind of leads on to the next question of what questions to ask your technician. Ask about their qualifications, ask about their training, ask how long they have been doing this procedure, ask about what products they are using, ask if they are a senior technician. That might seem pretty anal and for those who know me personally, I am a lawyer, I'm a solicitor, so I like every single detail and I can be quite, um, I don't mean to be, but I'm very thorough and it's my face. So I'm not aggressive, but I'm going to want every single detail. Question can't be answered properly, 100% to my satisfaction. I wasn't going to get it done. And Louise was just amazing. She knew 
the sources of her product, she talked to me about the ingredients and the pigment, she talked to me about the whole process, the, the shaping that she does, she does a thing with a, a sticky thing on your face with like measurements and then she does this measuring thing with string and then she gets you to close your eyes. So I'm a very expressive talker, I talk a lot with my eyebrows and my face and when we were talking I had to try to not only close my eyes but completely relax my face which is very very hard for me to do because your eyebrow muscles are independent, so to try to make your eyebrows as even as possible. Remembering that your eyebrows are sisters and not twins, very important, um, but just to try to get them, she does all these weird and wonderful things with string and measurements and took forever. And whenever she had done it the second time and I sat up, I thought this brow was slightly thicker than this one, and she corrected it and it was just, she completely listened to exactly what I wanted. I wanted a higher arch here, and I wanted more square here instead of slightly rounded. And she did everything that I wanted. And even we were talking about like the density. She said, do you want your eyebrows more dense? And I was like, what do you mean by dense? And she's like, well, more hair strokes. And we talked about the fact that I had never really had proper eyebrows because I plucked them out of my head whenever I was 15. So I didn't know what my face would look like with kind of more hair on it, more like natural looking strokes. and she gave me her expert opinion and I agreed with her. She said that she thought more strokes would look better and that's exactly what we went for and she was so, so right. So whenever you are doing your research, research loads of different technicians in your area, read the reviews through, taking some of the reviews with a pinch of salt because sometimes the treatment can be perfect but someone's expectations are completely different to what the treatment actually is. Read loads of articles about it, read beauty bloggers and Again, pinch yourself for beauty bloggers who are being paid to advertise. FYI, I'm not getting paid to do this. This wasn't gifted. I paid the full amount and I will continue to pay for it. such an excellent service. Hashtag not gifted. So as well as qualifications, how long they've been doing it, you want to see results. So ask them to produce results and not just results that they would post on Instagram. And Louise has a whole folder in her phone, which is just people's eyebrows. It's incredible. And she was able to tell me the story of each person just from their brow and you know there was one lady she did was a cancer survivor and she she lost her eyebrows through chemo and Louise was able to restore them and they looked wonderful. There's other people who like myself who just had the tiniest tiniest little slither. One of the questions I got um, for thick brows would you do it? To be honest if I had thick brows there's other ways of of getting your perfect brow than microblading. I would say that microblading personally for me because my brows were so sparse, that's what I wanted to fill in. But contact LH Beauty if you're based in the Northern Ireland area and ask her what's appropriate because I know there's other treatments or you could just need a, a good shaping. So for thick brows that don't necessarily need filled in, it may not be worth it because it is so much money and there might be something else involved. So definitely talk to your technician about other options than microblading. Microblading was just what suited me personally. Yes, yeah, sorry, I keep <laughs> talking around different points that I want to come to. So ask them about the results and also then about what shape you want as well. What suits your face, what you're used to. Take photographs of your eyebrows without makeup on, with a full face of makeup. Say what you want. Like I wanted slightly higher arches here and like n instead of just rounded, so I didn't want rounded at the front and rounded at the top. I wanted kind of more square like here and slightly higher up. What I also wanted, which Louise made an excellent point about this, and I'm so glad she did, I would normally do the end of my eyebrows slightly, I would draw them slightly further down. And I said, can we not bring them down a little bit further? And she said, as you age, if you continue to get this treatment done, your face will drop. So you don't want to be 60 or 70 and you have a line down here because your eyebrow has drooped naturally. So she keeps it quite high up when you're younger. And then if you want it longer, you can draw it longer, but your face will fall naturally to a certain point. And I was like, that's amazing. Like she has thought this through. <laughs> and that was just, that was brilliant. That was absolutely what I needed to hear. So when you're talking to your artist, talk about what color you want. So for example, I literally just got my hair dyed this week. It's much, much darker than what I would normally go for, but my hair lightens to like this warm, auburny brunette color that I need so my eyebrows needed to match my hair as it was dark and it was lighter so Louise did a lot of mixing with pigments to get me my perfect color, the shape as well and then the arch and just if you're, it's really important as well to be able to talk to your technician and to be able to communicate with them what you want, it's your face and if you're coming away with this unhappy then that's money wasted. 
So take the time to talk through and get pictures of people's eyebrows that you like. I love Michelle Keegan's eyebrows. It suits their face, so it's taking that type of style. And it's also, it's an everyday brow look. It's not a, I'm going out, out brow look. So you wanna make sure that they're kind of not as toned down. If you want it that way, you can request it that way, but I wanted a daytime look that I could fill in with makeup if I wanted to, to make it like out, out. Was it really flaky? Did you need bangs cut in? Bangs, I'm assuming, is a fringe. I think it is a fringe. I had asked Louise this and I had said, I was thinking of getting a fringe cut in, but I'm worried about the hair rubbing against it, especially when they're trying to heal. She's like, you won't need one. And she was totally right. There was such minimal flaking after the first appointment. There has been flaking after the second appointment, especially not just on my brows, around my brows, but I think that's because I forgot to put on the ointment because you just forget because they look so, so good, which is bold. Very, very bold, so you shouldn't do that. You need to keep applying the gel two to three times a day. It's really, really important, that little balm that she gives you. Aftercare is key, I cannot stress this enough. It's a waste of money if you don't take care of it. Just throw 300 pounds out the window. So make sure you do that. So yes, I didn't need to cut my hair or anything. The flaking was minimal. The most noticeable thing is the kind of wet lick to it with a balm on it, and you don't need to do that forever, and it's, it's worth it. Can you get them wet? I've already talked about the aftercare process and the big no-nos. One question I was asked as well is how did you wash your hair? First day I went to the hairdressers as if you've watched my uh, microblading journey vlog, you'll know that. I booked in for a wash and a blow dry and then I was like, I can't keep doing this every couple of days. It's, it's too much money. So what I did is instead of having showers, I would have baths and I would dip my head till about here and this is a very attractive look. Dip my head to about here in the water and I would make sure to like push the water backwards so it doesn't fall over my face. I don't like putting my head under the shower anyway, I don't like water falling down on my face so it was really natural and easy for me. And then I had a dry face cloth sitting on the edge of the bath that I put here so whenever I sat up and the water rushed forward, I was able to just put it straight back. I would recommend as well, if you're having a body shower and you're not washing your hair, not to have it too hot so that it's too steamy because the steam is still moisture around your face. So be wary of hot showers. Is there anything you would change about your brows? Yeah, I would have gotten this done years ago. I know microblading has only been popular for the last four or five years and I'm so glad I watched and waited and did my research because I cannot stress this. Louise is an artist. She is so brilliant. I have had so many compliments on my eyebrows, on the shape of them. Everyone's stunned by them because they've seen my before and after. And I've actually put a picture on my Instagram as well. So it's at lil, L-I-L underscore underscore spud. If you go and have a look at my before and after photograph, it's incredible, the transformation of them. I wish I'd had the knowledge and the confidence now, but I needed to do my research. I needed to watch how her procedures went and they're just, it's, it speaks for themselves really. Our very last question, are you happy and was it worth it? I am so happy with my eyebrows. My confidence has soared with them. It is insane how much better I feel about myself having that thing that really annoyed me on my face fixed essentially. And each to their own, some people like the look, some people don't like the look, some people think you shouldn't dislike part of yourself, but this is something that really did affect my confidence and now that it's fixed, I just, I love them. I love them so, so much. So at the minute, they're seven days post appointment three. So I got the second appointment done a week ago today and they are so they're still in the recovery stage and I love them I love them so much whenever I sneeze I don't have to worry about the two lines that come up here in all seriousness my makeup routine in the morning has reduced by 20 minutes I get so much done in the morning now I have, wake up and I do my 15 minute yoga abs and I'm able to put a wash on and tidy the kitchen a little bit because I don't have to worry about my eyebrows because they're already done not only in my confidence I'm getting so many compliments on them I love them even for holidays. Not the only thing you have to do on holidays is make sure you have SPF on them to cover them, which is absolutely fine, but you can go in the pool and not worry about eyebrows falling off your face. It's amazing. So for me personally, it was worth every single penny. I did save up for it. I saved a long time for them and 
it's it's something that has maintenance with it as well every 12 to 18 months so you need to factor that cost in as well about being able to keep that up and being really strict about putting that 10 12 50 away a month to make sure that you can cover the appointment you know the the follow-up appointments that's a factor as well so it is something to think about it's not just necessarily the, the 300 pounds because your eyebrows won't look like this permanently as i say it's a semi-permanent cosmetic procedure it's not tattooing for me it is totally totally worth it i love them i hope i have answered all of your questions thank you so much to people who commented on my insta who to my insta story who have just asked me or sent me dms thank you so much for all of the questions i hope i have answered everybody's if you do have any more questions please pop them in the comments below and i will try to answer them individually also, I'm answering these from my perspective and my experience. You may find other people have completely different experiences, but this is my experience and with the best brow technician. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. And if you did like it, please do give it a thumbs up. It means the world to me to know that people are watching this and engaging with this. And I really do hope that it helped. If you have any comments, as I say, pop them below and I will hopefully see you soon.